like this there is, there is no quite like this quite place. Like this so this must be so the place be God the has God prepared. prepared and if you want joy Because this is the place God wants us to be. We welcome you all. We welcome you, welcome those who are worship with, worshiping with us virtually. And we welcome those who are sitting in the sanctuary with us. We are here to worship the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for always delivering to us just what we need. And Father, today we need your Holy Ghost pouring, us, pouring down on us. So give it to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody glad to be in the house of God one more time? Is anybody glad to be in the house of God one more time? Anybody come to give God worship? Anybody come to give God praise? Well, we want to offer up praise and worship this morning. I want us all to just set the atmosphere for worship this morning because God is good, amen? And all the time, God is good. Just gonna worship God this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Song says, I do, I do worship. I do worship. I really I do. Part says, for your goodness and your glory, for your goodness and your glory, for the joy, for the joy inside your story. Say, I do, I do worship, worship you. you. Next part says, oh, how excellent. Come on. Is your presence? Is your presence? Say we will. We will, we will bless your bless name. Your bless your name. Come on, for your goodness and your glory. For your goodness and your glory. For the joy. For the joy inside your soul. Say for the 
peace you gave for to me. Peace you gave to me. For the day you for set me free. You set me free for your good. For the joy inside your soul. Come on, say. come to give God praise, honor, and glory for everything he's done for us, for his love and his grace and his mercy, for life, health, and strength, for food, clothing, and shelter, for the activity of our limbs. We just come to worship God and thank him for everything he's done and thank him for what he has planned for us and thank him for what he's going to do for us. But we just want to thank God and praise him because he is the lifter of our head. And we just come to worship God this morning. Come on, let's tell him. Come on, tell him. Say it. For your goodness. We come to thank God this morning for his goodness. Hallelujah. Say, and your glory. And your glory. Yes, we do. We come to worship you. Hallelujah. Come on, say it again. For your goodness. For your goodness. Hey. And your glory. And your glory. Come on, hallelujah. 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 Come on, take it up. Hey. You're so faithful. So faithful. How many know we serve a faithful God? Say he's so faithful. He's so faithful. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he's so faithful. He's so faithful. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being faithful. Come on, say he's so faithful. He's so faithful. Come on, yes, he is. Yes, he is. morning come on why don't you lift your hands toward heaven and open up your mouth and tell them this morning lord i love you lord i love you yes i do yes i do i really love you lord lord i love you lord i love you hallelujah again somebody needs to tell them this morning say lord i love you say it. come on lord i love you hallelujah hey, yeah. say lord i love you lord i love you come on somebody hallelujah. give god praise in this place hallelujah thank you god Yes, yes, yes. As our praise team just remind us, we love God for his glory. We love him for his goodness. We love him because 
he loved us so much that he came and gave his life for us. And because we love him, we are here to praise him. Do we love him this morning? Are we ready to show how much we love him this morning? Yes, yes, yes. We are here to praise the Lord. And we have visitors in our midst <laughs> praising the Lord. <laughs> um, we have um, those who are visiting with us in the sanctuary. Would you, would you just raise your hand or stand? Yes. Great. All right. All right. Very. Let's give a hand. Well, we want to welcome you. We want you to know that the presence of the Lord is in this place. We want to know that when you leave here, and even before you leave here, you should have his Holy Ghost Spirit. And that will be with you throughout your life. And so we want to thank you for coming. And enjoy your day. Amen. I think we have... This is Pastor's mother, right? Sister Jew, okay. And his... And his brother, um, and you know, the, the first time I, I met, well, I saw a pastor's brother, I think it was um, through Zoom, he looked so much alike, <laughs> I thought it was pastor. So, so, but we are glad to have you both here. We are glad to have all our guests that are worshiping with us. This morning, we also want to pause to thank the Lord for his blessings in the lives of those who have been ill and he has been with them we want to ask special blessing on the Mobley's family sister Mobley lost her mother yesterday last night evening and we know how difficult death is for us in our earthly selves and so we want to pray for that family we want to pray for Dr. Perkins, because she will be standing in the place of our pastor today, and that's a big job. But we know we serve a big God, and so all is well, because that's not her job. That's God's job. We pray for our pastor and his wife, who are not here with us. But we know the Lord has them in his arms. So at this time, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your goodness and mercy that the praise team just sang about. It is only through your goodness, Lord, and your mercy that we are here. Lord, we are asking that you'll help us to give our hearts to you so that you can dwell within us. We thank you for the visitors and guests. We thank you for each member present. We thank you for those who are worshiping with us virtually. Lord, we ask that you'll visit them where they are and show up in your goodness and mercy. We thank you for Dr. Perkins who will be presenting your word Lord we know it's not her words it will be your words we ask that you'll open our hearts to receive them but more so to do them to follow them at the end of that and father we continue to give you praise we ask that you'll be with our pastor and his family pastor Drew and sister Drew and the children and you'll continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Yeah. How many
many of you all serve a good God on today? Come on, let me see those smiling faces. Let me, you all serve a good God on today? Amen. Now y'all know this song, because I sing it a lot, thanks to her. Thanks. Come on, so it says arise. That means that's some active worship. You can stand up, put your hands together. Come on, let's give God some praise on today. Come on, help us sing this. And I'm a little hoarse, so y'all sing with me. Here we go. Come on, everybody say arise. Arise, oh God, mm. and take your place. Let your kingdom, let your kingdom be a sad. Oh, ancient, oh, ancient of days. Why? You are good. And your mercy, and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, that's real simple, y'all. Real simple. Come on, let's take it up. Arise, oh God. Arise, oh God. And take your place. Take your place. We enthrone you with we our worship. You with our worship. We, glorify we glorify your name. Cause you are good. You are good. And your mercy. And your mercy. Hey. We're going up again, you guys. Here we go. Arise, oh God. Arise, oh God. And take your place. Take your place. We're standing on your we promises. Are standing on your promise. The just shall live. The just shall live. Forever. Okay, y'all, one more time. One more time. Let's take it up again. Arise. 
serve a good God. You do you serve a good God? I know I do. I'm standing here today because He's so good, and I don't deserve it. Hey, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Yeah, I've been doing some bad things. Hey, you've been better to me than I've been. You've been better than me. Hey, you've been better than me. Come on, one more time. Hey, you've been better than me. Somebody knows about the mercy of God. Somebody knows about the mercy of God. Somebody's been tried in the fire and you know you come out as pure gold. For God is good. And his mercy endured forever. If I could just get 10 people that you know God is good and you know he's made a way for you. You know he's opened doors for you. You know he's shut some doors for you. You know he's kept you in the midnight hour when you didn't have anybody to call on. You knew you were going to call on Jesus. If I could get just 10 or 15 of you to just wave your hands in declaration that it, it was me. I cried out to God. It was me. I needed him the most. It was me. I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't make it over my own I couldn't do it but I knew I had God his, his grace and his mercy endured forever hallelujah hallelujah He has been good and his mercies endure it forever not yesterday not just this morning but forever were you shouting with the choir with the praise team about the goodness of God you know we look across here and we see sister Morrison Emily Morrison And we welcome her back and it let us think about the goodness of God. You know, members of the, of the praise team who were singing, we can remember when some of them were going through horrible times. But God is good. Do you remember when you were going through horrible times? And now we are saying the Lord is good. He is good forever. He's good forever. And we have an opportunity to show how glad and happy we are for his goodness. And this is the time we give back to him. You know, we cannot, we cannot pay God for his goodness. But we can obey the Bible and his words and give to him what he has asked us to do. One tenth. We can also give to him a liberal offering. You know, when, when people are good to us, we give them gifts, right? Well, God is good to us. Do we have gifts for him today? There are three ways in which we are 
allowed to give through Cash App, through our website, and through the mail. So please, make sure that each one of us do what the Lord has asked us to do. Because he promises that he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings. And we're not doing it for the promises. We're doing it for his goodness. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for an opportunity to participate in your kingdom work on earth. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us financially, physically, emotionally. And Lord, we ask that you'll continue to help us to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. Amen. As a believer, we sometimes go through different things. Sometimes we're on a mountaintop experience, and sometimes we go to a valley low experience. But God has a way of breaking us gracefully. And that's what this song talks about. It says, here I am, God, arms wide open, pouring out my life gracefully broken. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that God has a lot of grace and mercy for each and every one of us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he extends it day by day. Glory to his name. All I have in these hands and multiply. God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again set me on fire set me on fire help me sing right here all all i have in these hands and most of my god god all that i am and find my heart on on the altar Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Let's sing it. Here I am. Here I am. God, arms wide open. Oh, oh pouring out, pouring out my life. Right here it says, My heart, my heart stands in all of your name. Your mighty love stands strong to the end. You will fulfill your purpose in me. You won't say, You will be with me. You will be with me. Here I am. Here I am. God. Arms wide open. Is it pouring out my life? Pouring out my life, gracefully broken. Oh, oh here I am. Here I am. Oh God. Arms wide open.
here I am, here I am, God, arms wide open.
for such a time as this. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing, God, in your sight, O oh God, my strength, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. September 28th, 2019, 5.45 a.m. I remember it so vividly. I was dreaming that I was reading a text from my daughter that gave many reasons for her thanking me for all I had done for her the year she had been on this earth. The dream was delightful as those who have parented in any capacity know that parenting ain't easy. The text read, Mama, I want to thank you for helping me to stand on my own two feet. I want to thank you for helping me to realize that all you did was for my good. I want to thank you for helping me to recognize my part in our broken relationship. I want to thank you for being there when I experienced those things you warned me against. Mama, I want to thank you for not giving up on me until I came to my senses. The end of the text says something to this effect. I want to thank you for all the things you have done for me now that I can count the stars. How profound. It was so profound and so interesting, I got up out of my bed. I grabbed my journal and I wrote everything down. And you know what I said? Hmm, that'll preach. <laughs> How many of us would be curious to know the significance of now that I can count the stars. I was. So I began doing research and meditating on this title in reference to the text from Genesis 15. I started with the best source of research. You know what that is? The Bible. I went to my Bible to see what the scripture had to say about the stars. So I got my Bible. I turned to Genesis chapter 1, and I looked at verses 14 through 19. Genesis 1, 14 through 19 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser night to rule the night. And listen, he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. As I meditated further, I thought about this nursery rhyme. You may be familiar with it. It goes like this. If you know it, join in with me. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So you know what? I look up that particular nursery rhyme, and there's a second stanza. I never knew about it. As a teacher, I never taught that second stanza to my children. And I don't know if any of you 
have been told what that circumstance is, but I have it for you. It says, when the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, that you show your little light, twinkle, twinkle all the night. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I wondered about those stars. So, as a teacher, I went a little bit further. I did some research on stars. I have a few facts to share with you about stars, and it's going to be very interesting that some of the facts that I share about stars are some of the same things that happen in our life. Fact number one, astronomers use spectroscopy to determine the comp composition of stars, planets, and other objects. This process uses instruments with a grating that spreads out the light from an object by wavelength. This spread out light is called a spectrum, which has determined that every element has a unique fingerprint. I know, that's what I see. Identifying those fingerprints allows researchers to determine what it is made of. But God, but God, Psalm 147 verse 4 says, He telleth the numbers of the stars. He calleth them by their name. Yes. My God, not only does he know the fingerprints, your fingerprints, my fingerprints, he knows the fingerprints of everything he has created. Have you ever looked at a leaf? And you see those little spines going through the leaf? They may be similar to fingerprints. But the interesting part to me is, out of the billions and billions and trillions of stars, God knows their name. Oh, yes. Stars are made of very hot gas. The gases are hydrogen, 71%, and helium, 27%. And those are the two lightest elements. Stars shine by burning these two elements. Stars die because they exhaust their nuclear fuse, which is the helium and the hydrogen. Once there is no fuel left, the stars collapse and the outer layers explode as a supernova. I did research on supernova. There are supposed to be a supernova happening in 2022. People are wondering, will the supernova destroy Earth? Will we end? Will this be our last demise? I say no. You know why I say no? Because God has already told us in the Word how it's going to end. Whose report will you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. The stars are so far away, more than any distance we can move on earth. And get this, one thing to keep in mind is that stars move very slowly. Remember that point as I get further into this message. Because in this message, I equate stars with strife, turmoil, troubles, and afflictions that we have, as well as acceptance, rest, and salvation. I have three objectives for this message. First, I want to talk about God's friends. Abraham, not David this time. We're talking about Abraham and how he built his trust in God when he was admonished to count the stars. After talking about the stars for Abraham, I want to talk about stars for us as Christians and why we experience the things that we experience with strife, turmoil, trouble, affliction. And then I want to invite you to reflect upon some of the stars that have happened in your life 
in order to see how you have been assisted to enter into his rest. Abraham's story begins in the Bible from Genesis 11:27 through Genesis 25:10. I did so much research, I couldn't put it all here. It's too much. But I want you to understand that everything that Abraham went through was planned, was ordered, was directed, was navigated by God. And the purpose and end was for us. That purpose was for us. So I'm just going to go through a few of these chapters. I'm not giving you all the information because it's too much. We know that in Genesis 11:31, Terah, who was Abram's father, took Abram his son and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son's Abram's wife. And they went forth from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And when they came to Haran, they dwelt there. I count this as a star for Abraham because he had to pick up and he had to move. Moving is stressful. It's stressful. Changing jobs is stressful. So this was star number one for Abraham, or Abram at this time. When his father died, the Lord appeared to him again. And in Genesis 12, 7 and 8, the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there Abram built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And then Abram removed from thence into a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Have you noticed in every instance where he moved, he did something special? You know what he did? He built an altar. It was necessary for him to build that altar because he wanted to keep his mind focused on the God that he served. And the, the blessing from that is that not only did he know about that altar, the surrounding people knew whenever they came upon an altar that Abr Abram built that. Well, as we go on in this story, there was a famine, a famine, a lack of food and water in Canaan, which caused Abram to move to Egypt. When he got to Egypt, Abraham told a lie. He lied. He said that Sarah was his sister because he did not want the king to harm him because he wanted to take his wife. Sarah was 65 at the time. The sister was fine. She had it going on because the king did take her. Sarah, he took her as his own, but you know, but God said, uh-uh, you can't have this fine woman. She is not yours. So God put a plague on the house of Pharaoh. Then the king said, uh, something is going on. He called Abram and said, what is this? What have you done against me? What have I done to hurt you? I let you come into my land I let you live here, and look what you've done. You've lied. King said, get out. <laughs> get out. Take your beautiful wife, take all your possessions, and leave my land. And the king was so uh, adamant about no harm coming to Abram and his family that he sent an entourage to guide Abram out of Egypt. Back there, it was not known. It was not done. But the king did not want any further plagues or harm to come upon his land. So he sent those soldiers to guide him as he went out. And you know, Abram went back to Canaan. When he went back to Canaan, he went back to that original altar that he had erected. 
During the years he was out, the people of the land took care of that altar. If it was in disrepair, they repaired it. So, in Genesis 13, 14, it says, Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. It's interesting to go back to where you left and find things the way you left them. When Abram left, that altar was not in disrepair. When he came back, that altar was still good, good enough for him to worship on. Well, we go on with the story. There was strife between Abram and Lot's herdsmen, which was settled by the men separating. Genesis 13, 18 says, Abram removed his tent. That old man left. He removed his tent and came to dwell in the place of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And what did he do? You know what he did? He built an altar. Everywhere he went, he built an altar. Well, chapter 14 of Genesis give, gives the account of four kings. Amraphel, Ariok, Chedorlaomer, and Tidal, who made war with the kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zilbion, and Bela. In this war, many captives were taken. Also was taken Lot, his family, and everything that he owned. Abram and his trained soldiers, the ones that were born in his house, <coughs> said, this means war. <laughs> so they went, they fought, and took back everything that the devil has stolen, God gave it back. Now this takes us to our scripture <laughs> of the morning found in Genesis 15, 1 through 6. Genesis 15, 1 says, after these things, what things, the ones that I just told you about the war, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not fear, Abram, I am a shield for you. Your reward shall be very great. The things that we were talking about, the victory of the war, the blessings of the war, and the self-denial that Abram exhibited in not taking anything for himself. The word of the Lord came to Abram. But Abram had a lot to fear, even though God said, fear not. The four kings could have come back and gotten Abram and his, and his men because they took all of the lootings, all of the booty, all of the, the delicacies and the people that uh, they had taken. Abram was still a stranger in a foreign land. He didn't know much about those people. You know, it's like when you go on a job, you're the new kid on the block, you have to kind of feel your way in, you're not a part of the clique, they won't let you in because you were not the original that came from them. So Abram was a stranger. He had a lot to fear. He had the presence of evil and the absence of good. But God said, don't worry, I'm your shield and I'm going to protect you. But Abram said, oh Lord, what reward can you give me because I go childless. I don't have any children, and the one that's in my house is to be my heir. But God said, mm-mm, mm-mm. God said, this man will not be your child, but one who will come forth from your own body, he shall be your heir. And then God is so awesome, he took Abram outside. He said, son, look up. And when Abram looked up, God said, what do you see? Abram said, stars. God says, Abram, count the stars if you can. Abram said, Lord God, it's too many. 
It's too many for me to count. God said, well, Abram, that's how your descendants are going to be. You're going to have so many descendants, you won't even be able to count them. He said, now look, what do you see down there? What do you see on the ground? He said, dust. And you know, dust, which we were made from, you can't, you, you can't touch it. When you, when you dust your house, you see all of these little particles. You can't even put them together to form a little ball. But God says, that's how your children are going to be, as the sand on the seashore. Verse 6 says, then he, he is Abram, believed in the Lord. In the Hebrew, the word for believe is amen, A-M-A-N, A-M-A-N, from which we derive our amen, amen. Every time you say amen, you're saying it is so and so it is. So now when you say amen, make sure you believe what you're amening to. Because some things are not so. Choose carefully. So the command to go into the land which God would show him was accompanied with that promise. Now the thing about waiting is, when we wait in a state of suspense, that's not faith. That's doubt. If you wait on something and you're suspenseful and, and trying to figure it out, that's doubt. Also, when you try to perform something, you try to have faith after the performance, that's not faith. That's, you're going by sight. Abraham didn't do that. His faith sprung from the seed of promise. And listen to this. Abram, like us, had no righteousness because the Bible says he, God, credited the belief of Abram to him as righteousness. Righteousness is here imputed to Abram. Therefore, mercy and grace are extended to him. Mercy taking effect in the pardon of his sin and grace in bestowing the rewards of righteousness. We need to be reminded of God's promises to us of salvation through faith as recorded in Galatians 3, beginning with verse 6, which says, So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then, that those who have faith are children of God. Do you have faith? Amen. Those who have faith are the children of God. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles, of which we are. We're not Jews, we're Gentiles. He justified us by faith through Abraham, in saying to him, all nations will be blessed through you. So those of you who are, rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of God. So what can I say more about Abraham? He believed God. He moved. He had strife. He had afflictions, conflicts, tribulations, troubles. But he was blessed of God. And you know what? In Hebrews 11, Abraham is listed there along with the other faithful people who showed action. Showed action. And our faith causes us to show action as well. Okay, so now let's go into us as Christians. You say you're a Christian? You wonder why you have so much going on in your life? I have five reasons to tell you why we have so much going on in our life. Reason number one, it may be that God is contending with you because he wants to show his own power 
in upholding you. God shows his power in upholding us. God delights in his children. And you know what? When a man delights in his child, he puts him up on Front Street. I see it on Facebook. I see the little children, the parents say, my child uh, is a blue belt, I mean a black belt, a yellow belt. I see it where the parents say, my child did this and that. So if your child is intelligent, you delight in it, and you love for your child to be put to hard questions. Because you know your child is able to answer those questions. I'm not going to tell the story of when I was teaching at Alpha and I had a third grade class. I had a student who was very bright, very bright. At that time, I did home visits. I went to this home, and the child made a C on uh, the report card. The mom said, oh, no, we do not have C's in my home. My child is too intelligent for that. So when you know your child can do better, you push them to do better. But you know what God did because he delighted in his children? You know what he did in Job? God told Eliphaz in Job 42, verses 7 and 8, God told Eliphaz, he said, I'm angry with you and your friends because you didn't believe in me. You haven't spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So he said, now if you want to get back in my good graces, take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. They had to do something. They had to sacrifice the burnt offering. But he says, my servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job did. So God glories in his children. He loves, you all, he loves to have us tried. Amen. That the whole world, not only the people around you, but the unfallen worlds, the angels may see that there is none on the face of the earth like you. And then even Satan with his lying, scheming self. He can't say anything against you when it comes to what you're doing in God's behalf like he couldn't say much about Job. Because God said, have you considered my servant? Put your name there. Have you considered my servant? Can he brag on you? Oh, yeah, he can. So God glories in his children. And you know what? God sometimes purposely allows us to go through trials. On the right hand, on the left hand, in front of us, and behind us, there are so many accusations, so much going on. But you know what? God surrounds us. He has that hedge of fire. He has that hedge of fire around us. He has that hedge of protection, and the enemy cannot get through unless he has that permission. So you know what? There stands the child of God with all of the billows raging and, and all of the things happening around him. Calm. Calm. Serene. Because the child knows that he has victory through his God and Savior. And then God brags and says, Satan, you see my child. You see my child. My child is more than a match for you. Did you hear that? More than a match. Weak though he or she may be, through my power, my child can perform all things. All things. Reason number two, perhaps the Lord is doing this to develop your graces. You said graces, what are they? Your graces are a disposition to kindness. Some of us are so mean-spirited. God 
not, excuse my French, God don't like that. So he puts you through to develop your disposition to kindness and compassion. He wants you to be respectful, courteous. And you know what? That's kind of like what we call character building. In Patriarchs and Prophet, page 134, these words are penned. Trials patiently borne, blessings gratefully received, meekness, kindness, mercy, and love habitually exhibited are the lights that shine forth in the character before the world, revealing the contrast with the darkness that comes of the selfishness of the natural heart. Our hearts are naturally selfish. Who can know it? We don't know our hearts. There are some graces that would never be discovered if it were not for our trials. I can attest to that. Because when God shows me some stuff, I feel like, oh God, oh, ooh. no God, oh, not me, not me. Yes, it's you. It's you. Do you not know that we don't develop as good in the summertime when things are going nice as we do in the wintertime? In the winter, there's a harsh weather, and we have to kind of, well, not lately, because winter seems like summer and fall. So, but anyway, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day when winter was winter, we had to strive to make it out. And you know what? This little thing, I haven't seen many of them lately. The lightning bug, it's called a glow worm. When do you see it? At night. You don't see it in the daytime. It can't glow during the daytime. Neither can our sins, I'm sorry, our graces develop in the daytime. God often allows afflictions to come up, so up upon us so he can make jewels of his children to make their graces shine better. Marvin Sapp put it like this. He saw the best in me when everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Ha! So God sees the best. He develops the best. Another reason for our stars, our strife, affliction, is that God contends with us because we have some secret sin. This sin is causing devastation to us. It's painful. It's stinging. It's damaging. And once God reveals these sins to us and we find out what they are, through his grace, we can knock them on the head and get rid of them. But then there's the other side. There may be some sins that God is trying to protect us from, some that he sees that's coming down the pike, that's coming in the future. So if we can remember and reminisce on the things that are happening now, then those sins, those new ones that try to creep upon us, we won't be so quickly to perform them. And then we'll pray and thank God and say, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me so I might not sin against thee. Amen? Another reason that God allows afflictions and strife in our life is so that we can share with Jesus. What do I mean sharing with Jesus? As Jesus was in this world, so we must be. We must have fellowship with him in his sufferings that we may be conformable unto his death. God is chiseling you. He's hammering you. Because you are a rough block, not a smooth one. You're rough. We are rough. We got rough edges. And God has to chisel away. He has to perform his mighty acts.
so that we can be like Jesus. And Jesus said, I do always, always those things that please my Father. And Jesus spent quality time with the Father. He went every morning before his Father. Even in, at the night season to see Father, what would you have me do today? Some of those things may not have been in Jesus' will, but he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. So that's the point we have to get to. Because in Jeremiah 29, it's God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans. So if we share with Jesus, we must submit unto God and everything else will be added to us. The last reason, number five. Oh, it's not going to last forever, y'all. Stars die, this sermon is going to die soon. <laughs> the Lord may contend with you to humble you. We, as a people, are so full of pride. <laughs> and I, I'm, pride is okay. But when it gets to the point where you puffed up, you exalt yourself above God like Satan did. I will. I'm going to. I shall. He says, uh-uh. Let me wait, wait, my child. Because you're his child, he will humble you. If you were not his child, he said, have your way. But because we are his children, he humbles us. Pride. Because of pride, Proverbs 11, 2 says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. God says, if you don't do what I tell you to do, my child, I have a way of disgracing you before all of these people. You trying to play like you all of that. And like they used to say, and a bag of chips. So when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. In looking back, how many of you feel that a lot of your past troubles had to do with that pride thing? I'm the first to raise my hand. And when I look at them and look back, I say, mm, I shouldn't have done that. I'm not going to do that again. So now, we have five things for our stars. There may be so many others, and I'm sure as you've been sitting listening, you thought of some reasons on yourself. But the first one is God is contending with you that he may show his own power in upholding you. The second one is God is doing this to develop your graces, kindness, compassion, respect, mercy, and love. God contends with you because you have some secret sin that he is trying to get rid of because it is damaging you. God allows those so that we can share with Jesus. We may be conformed to his divine nature. God contends with us to humble us. This Christian journey is laden with stars along the way. From the time we first entered this world and were smacked on our bottom to take that first breath, that was a star. Why they beating on a polar bear? It was for their good. That's a star. As we matriculate or go on through this life's journey, whether we enroll in what happens or not, we gather stars along the way. As you think back over your life, reminisce on events that you can remember. Some of them were painful, but you grew from them. Some of them were repeated over and over because you had not gotten the victory over those. But all along the way, he has been faithful to us. We can't count the stars, and neither could Abraham. There are too many to count. 
just as the sand on the sea. The blessings, the joys, the sorrows, the good days, the bad days are all part of the stars that are destined to help us do what Abraham did, build our altars along the way. If you come upon a star, a stripe, or whatever, and you don't pray, something is wrong. How you gonna make it out without prayer? How you gonna make it out without calling on the Lord? Even though stars move slowly, Remember I told you stars move slowly? Things that happen in our life, we say, Lord, how long, how long, oh Lord? How long, how long, oh Lord? The good news, some good news now, some good news is that stars have an ending or they die. Things in our life have an ending. Once God sees that what he has put us through, we are developing what he is after. Stars lead us to the throne of God where we do the necessary thing, and that is worship, worship. I want you to reflect over the stars in your life as you listen to this song. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Let us worship Him. Let us worship Him. Let us worship Christ, our Lord. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Let us worship him, let us worship Christ, our Lord, all the earth shall praise him, let us bow down
worship Christ the Lord. Strife, the essence stars. Turmoil, the T in stars. Acceptance, the A in stars. Rest, the R in stars. Which lead us to the S in stars. Salvation. The culmination of counting of the stars for Abram and us is Jesus Christ, the promise through which all nations of the earth would be blessed. God stressed to Abraham that the nations of the earth would be blessed through your offspring. So now God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Only through union with Jesus by faith can we become offspring of Christ. Just as in my dream, when my daughter thanked me, we should also thank God. God, I thank you for helping me to stand on my own two feet. God, I thank you for helping me to realize that all you did was for my good. God, I thank you for helping me to recognize my part in our broken relationship. God, I thank you for being there when I experienced those things you warned me against. And God, oh God, oh God, I thank you I thank you for not giving up on me when I was out of my mind. Thank you for not giving up on me until I came to my right senses. If you thank God for the stars that you have encountered upon your way, I invite you to stand with me as we pray to thank our Father for all he has done, all he is doing, and all he will do for us now that we can count the stars. If you're at home and this message has touched your heart, and you want to contact our church, a number will come up on the line, moment, on the screen momentarily. Feel free to reach out to us and we will get back with you. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus to thank you for those things that you allow to come upon us because you love us. Lord, we want to just rush and get through those afflictions and, and the stress, but we have to understand that you are working out our masterpiece. You are working us and chiseling us so that we can come forth as pure gold. Lord, you will work with us, work on us until we perform the way you would have us to. And that's through our acceptance of the fact that you are working good for us. Lord, we thank you that after that is done, you're going to give us rest. We still may be living, but those things that come upon us, we will have rest because we would say, I've been there, I've done that, and I know he is able. I know he is able to see me. And God, we know that the ultimate, the ultimate for us is to meet you in peace. And the word says, he that shall come, will come. And when he comes, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us that are alive and remain, we shall be caught up 
to meet him in there. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's our prayer. That's our plea. Even so, work on me, Jesus. Work on us, Jesus. Even so, even so, even so, come, Lord Jesus, is our prayer. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Are you ready to be a star for Christ? You know, um, Dr. Perkins uh, ended her the sermon with, Star leads us to the throne of God. So it seems very fitting that we should be ready to be stars for Christ. We should be ready to lead others to the throne of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being with us today. We thank you for using your servant in such an excellent way. We thank you for giving us the privilege of listening and hearing and the opportunity to go and do your will. Help us to lead others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. What's going on, everybody? This is Pastor Nathaniel Drew, and on behalf of the Breath of Life Seven-Day Adventist Church, whether you are one of our members who are watching today, or whether you just happen to stop by and worship with us, we are so glad that you did. We pray that you are blessed beyond measure, and that something that you saw or experienced today found a special place in your heart that you can carry with you, not only today, but also for the days that follow. And also consider stopping by. 5665 Night on the Road right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We would love to see you, connect with you, and get in touch with you. Now listen, we might be a little biased, but we just believe that there is no place like this place. And so we look forward to connecting with you again. Until then, we love you, but most importantly, God loves you. God bless you.